What's up guys? Welcome to part two of my Revit to 3ds Max workflow. The last video was all about Revit and how you set your models up to have a good time in Max. This one is 100% in Max. Max is an interesting program in that you can do so many different things in it and then you can find tons of plugins to do even more. You can do lighting, textures, VR, video game development, animations. And the fact that it's that versatile means that it's really easy to get overwhelmed and have no idea where to get started. But that versatility means you can tailor this program to fit exactly into your workflow and ultimately have more control over your creative process. I'm going to assume you have zero experience with Max and give you an epic crash course into just the features that are relevant to our ArcViz workflow. Then we'll use what we learned to start making a template file that will make it much easier to start a new project in Max and be rendering within a couple minutes. By the end of this video, you're gonna be rendering these sweet black and white models that are great for understanding your massing at eye level and seeing how light plays across your design. I've got links in the description below if you feel like you need to jump ahead on anything. Also a little side note, 3ds Max needs a rendering engine installed that does all the behind the scenes calculations to make your pretty picture. I use V-Ray and Corona. For this rendering workflow, I'm gonna be showing you Corona because I think it's easier to learn. There are some really cool tools for designers and it has a sweet 45 day trial. Go download that and let's jump into Max. So open up Max and this is what you get. You start with four windows that show different angles onto your scene. By default, you start with the top, the front, the left side, and the perspective view. Clicking one and pressing Alt-W will get you one maximized. Let's click on the perspective one and keep that one maximized for now. Next, you have this bar on the right that has a few tabs. The one on the far left is the Create tab. It's home to everything that you can add to your scene. Within it, you have a couple icons that help sort the different things you can create. The first one is 3D geometry, like boxes, spheres, and pyramids. It's a good one to know about, but since we're doing all of our modeling in Revit, you're not really going to be here too often. The next one is 2D lines, another good one to be aware of down the road, but for now you don't really need to spend too much time here. The next one is lights, which is a good one to be familiar with. And the last one is cameras, which you'll definitely be using regularly. The other three can effectively be ignored for the purposes of our workflow. Within each of these icons, you also have a dropdown, which gives you further categorization of the objects that you can create. You really only need the standard ones and the ones specific to the rendering engine you're using. In our case, that's Corona. Definitely get comfortable navigating these menus, but we're not actually going to spend that much time here because ideally we're doing all of our modeling in Revit. That said, let's make a simple box and use that to learn how to navigate the viewport. Go to the Create tab, make sure you're on Standard Primitives, and click Box. Now go to the viewport, click, hold, and drag to create a 2D footprint. Release and drag up to give it height, and then click again to finish the box. Now that we have that, let's go over how to navigate the scene. Click and hold your scroll wheel to pan the view. To orbit, hold Alt while holding the scroll wheel. Next, start learning the following keyboard shortcuts because they are legitimately the key to navigating Max easily. Q is just a general select. Clicking Q repeatedly will cycle through different ways that you can click hold to select things in your scene. W is move, and it brings up this little gizmo device with axis constraints. You can click on any axis or combination of them to move in 3D space. E is rotate, and updates your little gizmo accordingly with the same type of axis constraints, except now you're rotating. R is for scaling and again does the same update to the gizmo and now it will scale in whichever direction you choose. You will find these all fit very nicely on the keyboard together. Get super used to using them as they are crucial to being able to jump around your max scene effortlessly. A couple other useful hotkeys. T jumps you to a top-down view. F brings you to a front view. L brings you to a left view. P jumps you back to perspective, and Z zooms you onto whatever you have selected. I can't emphasize enough how important hotkeys are in Max. They legitimately are the keys to making your life so much easier. 
Now let's take a look back at the bar on the right. The second tab is the modified tab. So this is where Max can start to seem a little bit daunting because of how many settings are available to you. But bear with me because you really are only going to be using a fraction of these and I'm going to walk you through exactly which ones are relevant for our ArcViz workflow. So this tab is where you go to adjust all the properties and options for the objects in your scene. It will give you different options based on which objects you have selected. Let's check that out by creating a camera. Go to the Create tab, go to Camera, and select Corona Cam. Click and drag in the viewport, and hit Escape to end the creation tool. Now click the Modify tab, and you'll see we now have all of your camera settings here instead of your box geometry setting. The Modify tab also has this Modifier List dropdown that lets you apply modifiers to an object. These do all sorts of things, from helping apply materials to manipulating the geometry of something. These are all parametric in that they adjust the base object in some way without permanently changing it. This is partly what enables our entire workflow with Revit because when you relink the base geometry, it's going to keep any of the modifiers that you've added onto it. Let's shift gears a bit and open up the material editor. Hit this icon or M to bring it up. If you go up to modes, you'll have the option to pick the compact or the slate editor. I suggest using the slate one over the compact one as it's going to be a bit easier to graphically understand how your materials are set up. We're going to take a much deeper dive into this in another video. Just know how to open this window up and that if you right click anywhere in the interface, you'll bring up this little menu and these are going to be all the different materials that you're able to create. Let's also take a quick look at this button, which opens up your layer manager. It's really up to you how you want to organize your scene, but I definitely suggest coming up with some type of standard that you regularly work within. Let's end our little overview with the rendering settings box. If you hit F10 or this icon, you will bring up your rendering settings. This first tab common is all generic 3ds Max settings that you'll have regardless of the rendering engine you're working with. The first settings that I'd get familiar with here are your output size. This is where you specify the resolution of your image and the aspect ratio, whether that be square, or portrait, landscape, 16 by 9. The other dropdown I would be familiar with is this render tab. This is where you actually specify whichever rendering engine that you have installed. All of the other tabs are really going to be specific to the rendering engine you choose and we'll go over those later. And that's about everything you need to know to get started with our ArcViz workflow. Let's reset Mac so that we have a clean file to start our template from. To do that, just go to File, Reset, and don't save. Now we're going to set up a template so that the next time that you have a project, you're able to just bring your design in right away and start rendering within a minute. None of this is too complicated. We're just going to set the rendering engine, turn on a global light, set some layers, um, just some general housekeeping to keep our workflow organized going forward. So first, let's set the rendering engine to Corona. To do that, we hit F10 or our rendering settings icon. Go to our dropdown and select Corona Render. Now what we're going to do is apply an all white material override. We're going to do this so that as soon as we bring our design in, we can just start rendering right away without having to fuss around with materials. We're just going to get a nice clean white massing model. This is very easy to set up. All you do is you go to the scene tab and you find this little material override checkbox and click it. What this does is sets a material override over everything in the scene so that you only get one material. It's great early in the project when you just want to see massing and see how light plays across your massing. You can use it for diagrams. You could use this by itself and just bring it into Photoshop and get fancy in there. There's a whole lot of things you can do and this is a really useful feature to know. But what we do need to do is tell it what material to use as the override. To do that, let's open up our material editor by pressing M. Now right click anywhere, hover over materials, go to Corona and select the Corona material. By default, it's going to give you this white material. To put this into the rendering setting box, you're just going to select this little node on the right and drag it into the slot in the rendering settings box. Max is going to ask you whether you want a copy or an instance. In Max, a copy is a unique clone that isn't linked to the original, whereas an instance is going to share all of the same properties. So in this case, you want an instance. While we're in the settings box, let's also add a couple of render passes. 
Render passes are super useful for post-production. They're essentially behind the scenes breakdowns of how your render is set up. We'll go much more in depth in these later in the process, but for now, let's just make sure that we turn a couple of them on in our template so that we have them when we need them. To add them, just select add. And let's go ahead and add reflection, refraction, Z depth, wire color, and alpha. Hit OK, and we're good. Now we want our template to have a global scene light already set up. I like to keep my scene super simple, just using a single HDRI light. An HDRI light is essentially a super high resolution 360 panorama of the sky, captured in such a way that it stores all of the light data. You can plug it into your Mac scene and all of that light will shine on your virtual building in the exact same way that it will out in the real world. They're super easy to work with because you can just plug in a different sky and get a completely different vibe across your entire scene. You can just rotate them around and that will just change the direction of all of your shadows. It's that simple. Because they're based off real light data, they tend to be a lot softer than some of the virtual suns that you get, so I tend to use that. Plus they're really easy because it's just one file gets all the light in your entire scene. I like simplicity. I use skies from PG Skies, um, which you really can't go wrong with, but there are also free ones available if you want to go download some and test this out in your own workflow. To set this up, you're going to go into your Environment and Effects dialog, which is located under Rendering and then Environment, or you can just press 8. You're now going to right click in your Material Editor. You're going to go to Maps, Corona, and then Corona Bitmap. Then just navigate to the HDRI file you downloaded, hit OK, hit OK again. Now you're just going to drag the node from your HDRI file into the environment slot. Select instance again, and you're good. The last thing I would do for your template is set up a layer for high poly objects. You can customize your layers to your heart's content, but I recommend at least having one parent layer to put all of your heavy models like plants and furniture in. So when your scene gets heavy and you wanna test some different lighting quickly, you can just turn everything on and off with a single button. At this point, just save this file out as a template so next time you wanna start designing, you don't have to do any of these settings. They're all gonna be ready for you. You'll just import your design, point a camera at the model, and you'll be rendering it within a minute. So now that we have our template set up, let's pull a design in and you will see how easy it is to just start rendering right away. For me, that ease is what makes it possible for me to design this way because I'm able to really quickly pull my design in, start taking a look at how it feels at eye level, and then jump back into Revit and be able to make adjustments based on whatever I'm seeing. So let's dive in. To link in the FBX that we made in the previous video, you're going to go to File, Import, and then Link FBX and then just navigate to that file that you made. Make sure your dropdown preset is combined by Revit Material. Also, for this first time that you're doing this, you wanna go over to the preset tab and select the combined by Revit Material option and hit modify and just double check that the options that you have match these. We don't wanna bring in helpers, a daylight system or cameras. We also want scene materials and parameters kept on reload. Hit okay jump back to the other tab and hit attach. You are in Max. You can also go ahead and link in the site if you hadn't done it yet. Now when you want to update your design, if you change something in Revit, you're just going to go to File, Reference, Manage Links, click to the Files tab, click your file and hit Reload. Make sure that your Keep Assignments are all checked on the bottom and hit OK. Now let's create a camera. Go to the Create tab, click the camera icon, and select Corona Cam. Click, hold, and drag in the direction of your design, and then press C to jump into the camera. You can use the scroll wheel to pan in this view and adjust the view height to something more realistic. You can press Shift F and that's gonna cut your viewport down into the same aspect ratio as the output render that you have set in your render settings. So right now I see that it's a little too square for my taste. So I'm gonna go into my render settings and change it to the standard HD 1920 by 1080. 
let's take a look at where we're at using Corona's interactive renderer, which is this icon. And you'll notice that we are way overexposed right now, which is easy to adjust. You just right click the camera name in the upper left hand corner, and that'll give you the option to bring the camera settings up in the modify panel. There are several ways you can fix the exposure, the global EV being the simplest. Just click that and drag the slider up and down to change your results. The photographic one matches how a real camera works with aperture and shutter speed, which is generally how I work. But if you're just getting into this, just do the global EV and you'll be totally fine. So how sweet is that? Now, if you move your camera around in the viewport, you'll actually get a real time update seeing how that looks in the renderer, which is so dope. Now, if you want to adjust your sky, you just go into your material editor, double click on that HGRI map and go to the rotation field. Just change that and you'll get to see the shadows adjust in real time across your design. So that's essentially how I'm able to use Max as a design tool. I'm able to use that live link that we have with Revit to update my design based on what I'm seeing here in the light. Of course, we're gonna end up breathing more life into it as we get materials and plantings added onto that, but what we're doing here gives you a whole lot of feedback early in your design process. The next video is gonna go more in depth in materials and how to start adding some color into these. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. I'm active on Instagram and YouTube, so follow and subscribe along. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.